Hello, fellow fumblers, and welcome to another episode of the Film Fumblers Podcast, the show where four friends fumble through your favorite films. Today, we are reviewing Jojo Rabbit, a movie released in 2019 and directed by Taika Waititi. So without further ado, my name's Adrian. I'm Jay. I'm Taryn. Yo, it's James. All right, boys. Let's What's jump up? into it. A shot? What are we From jumping into? Fumblers huh? into the shots. It's your first time here? The brand. (laughs) Hey, it might be somebody who's listening's first time here. They're they're like, where are they jumping? You know what? (laughs) What? What am I listening to? No. Because we do these lives, I need to do better at remembering that this is a podcast, too. So people just want All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Ooh. Yummy. Someone might be very confused. That was a, a really full shot for me. I know a lot of times we go like kind of skimpy on them. Uh, I filled that one up. It went down surprisingly smooth. What are you Bacardi. drinking? Bacardi. Oh, Bacardi. Rum. I forgot I poured gin and I'm dying over here. Ooh. Oh. But it's like the to... bottle's almost empty, you know? So I yeah. didn't want to get rid of it. Yeah. My, my Bacardi bottle, I lost the cap on new year's so there's just foil and a rubber band on it so i'm just trying to drink it <laughs> freaking handle though so it's oh it's, geez. it's a lot it's, yeah. it's gonna take a little bit well not at, not at this rate to be honest <laughs> still in the midst of quarantine but there is a light at the end of the tunnel okay uh jojo rabbit so this movie uh, recommended by jay's mom she really wanted us to to view this one i think she said quote this is the only way that Jay will watch this movie. And she's been, she had been trying to get you to watch it for so long. Like, no, yeah. It's, she's not wrong, but this is a movie that I wanted to watch. I just hadn't yeah. watched yeah. it. Aren't there so many of those though? There's millions. millions 2019, uh, uh, the year itself is just year like, of our Lord. Movies. holy crap. You, you look back at like what came out that year. You're just like, wow. Yeah. yeah there were a lot of, missed a lot of year. things. That was a very hell of good year, movie. dude. My favorite. Yeah. Really good year. And um, I was still catching up from that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's still yeah. so many. There's still so many that I, I would still want to watch. There's a lot of A24. We're not going to get an A24. Jay's going to get too excited. But... <laughs> dude, they had like five <laughs> movies come out that year that were all. I know. That's amazing. what I. That's why I thought like it was the year of yeah. A24. That yeah. was good. Dude, um, J. Joe Rabbit was the first movie I ever watch in theaters by myself have you guys ever done that really yeah. wow it was really I've nice i've never watched a movie by myself in theaters i've never no, done that either i don't think so it was really no, nice I yeah i, like I, don't, I guess i don't have that much self-confidence i'm just like oh man people are gonna <laughs> just look at me <laughs> how are they gonna look at you they're watching the movie I like i'm gonna eating, be looking at myself my like yeah. yeah that's another thing i mean i'm not trying to dodge around this movie but I can't go to restaurants by myself. Like, yeah, that's that's I've never done me. that. Never done yeah. that. And then I've tell the tell the server that it's your birthday, times. and then see if you <laughs> oh like it. <laughs> that would be so fucking weird. <laughs> like, yourself. just yeah, the confidence. So just... <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so Jojo Rabbit. Going into this, I I was like fully prepared for it to be like one hundred percent a comedy, and I I'm just gonna get right into it. I felt way more than I was expecting. Like, like, way, way, way more. And obviously, it was a little bit apprehensive, you know, watching a movie. I remember, just, like, the way to describe this movie to somebody is like, oh, it's about this little Nazi boy who has an imaginary friend that's Hitler. And it's like, yeah. wait, like, what? Like, really? <laughs> that's what it, and it's a yeah. comedy. It's, yeah. it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. This, there's a lot to unpack in this movie, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, yeah, it was interesting. Like you said, I didn't expect to you think about or feel as many things as i did right um and the comedy is interesting because there was like backlash for that like people thought oh you're taking this subject too lightly yeah whereas his stop argument trying was trying like, to give uh stop trying to make me feel sentimental towards nazis right yeah or even treat it with humor and yeah and his argument was like no it's not a that's not a bad thing it's like a weapon right like to show Mm -hmm. how ridiculous it was yeah it's like the comedy is just so disrespectful and i fucking love it like towards Towards all that stuff yeah 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 Yeah, well towards the end of the movie like you realize like it's not like 
I think that's and that's the thing is that people already cast their judgment based off of the premise, like how you said, right. Adrian. This is this is what's going on, and then the last line that uh, JoJo says to Hitler is "fuck you, Hitler" or something. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Fuck off, Hitler! Right? Like it just like, kicks yeah. him out it's, of a window. It's, yeah. it's okay. like definitely spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, spoilers. It's... Hitler dies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. People don't give enough. Didn't give it a chance enough. I think they were right. ready to jump on it. Yeah. Well, Taika Waititi on said in, alone. in an interview, he was just like, I think if people weren't upset about it, there'd be a problem. Like if he's like, if everyone loved it, then it would be weird. Like he wanted to, he, he was going for that. He was going for that kind of like on that edge, right? Where when you yeah. hear the plot of it, you're like, really? And then, you know, once you really give it a chance, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a satire, you know, and this isn't yeah. the first time we've had comedy about like really heinous things like i mean even uh charlie chaplin you know had had his whole spiel about about hitler and like that whole thing and i think that was yeah. like part of it who else was it um oh i'm gonna forget his name there was another like like really well-known um i can't remember if it was an just an actor or director but like gave taika a lot of praise um who had done something similar in the past i think it was something gibson um not uh, was it? No, and it was not Mel Gibson. It was <laughs> someone else Gibson, I think. Or uh, Mel someone else. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, like where, you know, this, this had been done before. And, and you know, he even yeah. said, like, it was, you know, this was released in 2019. He, after World War II, everyone was kind of just like, we need to make sure that we never forget about what happened. You know, what, what World War II was about. And he worked on this movie and released this movie because he felt certain individuals were starting to forget what happened then and it was you know an important reminder to say like this is kind of what it was but to show it in a satirical and more like comedic way you know mm -hmm. right yeah yeah i mean there's i don't know it's like okay here's a little story that happened to me over this week i I'm like the resident family IT guy. So I get all the calls from grandma, of like help me fix my computer. Right. Yeah. And, um, I was helping her fix my computer and I was telling her about this project we're working on. And she was just talking about like the weirdest, like stuff, like things that she've just probably heard in passing. And she believed that like the communist party was doing these things. Right. And it was like ridiculous things, not like modern conspiracies, just like things that were probably told to her when she was young about mm. communists and so like they have horns and shit like that kind of shit yeah, yeah like weird stuff. shit like that crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah so like that i mean it just struck like another level deeper because i had just talked to her and she just randomly starts bringing this up and we're watching this movie and they kind of like jab at that and but there's jabs at both sides too which i think is also interesting but mm -hmm. yeah it's weird it's weird because you start to like feel for the well he's like not really a nazi but he's a nazi yeah yeah I mean, yeah it's like there's people under there basically yeah yeah exactly but then at the, the end you're like oh, is... it was okay it was okay yeah. that i liked him <laughs> i think that go ahead james finish that i, I think the the difference is is that like so taika's like trying to humanize the nazi but but like for me it it's in a certain way it kind of falls flat because it's a child and and you're you're way more forgiving of a child's mistakes whatever you know their upbringing and stuff yeah. like that i think the message would have been a lot more powerful if jojo was older i think mm. hmm. Interesting. like and he has this change well of i think that yeah. was like that and, was something and, and, that... and are you and are you able to forgive jojo I think yeah. that's a question that we're that that we're left with. You, you're at the end of this movie. You 100 percent forgive Jojo right. for being what he is because he's a child, right? Yeah. Right. If he was, if he was one of those other Nazis that were really mean hearted, he didn't. But that's like the difference is like the innocence of childhood. But like, I don't know. Can can we can we hope for change in adults? Can we and, and like and, and right. like uh what's his name the the one eyed dude 
you know yeah. he Same he right. oh, yeah. he had a change of heart himself i guess yeah there was that redemption arc there or he you was know, always that way. way it kind of felt like to me like yeah. he always seemed kind of like a good guy mm-hmm. yeah. um but yeah. i i think it's more so a jab in reverse at the nazis for like indoctrinating these kids yeah like, in this way you know yeah and not necessarily because it would be harder to do if he was older and i don't think it would be that way i don't think it'd be about a change of heart i think it'd be you, well because you're playing with a very you're playing on a, like a, a knife's edge where if you make it a, if you make a movie where you're supposed to love a nazi protagonist who's a grown man then you're yeah. then you're straight up a nazi sympathizer right yeah like right, straight yeah. the fuck up so yeah. if you can look at the innocence in a child they, they had to have done it that way like if you can look at the yeah. innocence of a child yeah. and really i think you know and and taika said this in some interviews where like the, it was it was kind of like a a letter to his mother and to just like parents because um what's the little boy jojo obviously jojo's <laughs> uh <laughs> um jojo's dad is missing in in the entire film and yeah, so yeah. you have you have a little boy who's who's raised in this environment and who's looking for a role model a- anywhere he can and right. that role model happens to be hitler and so it just i don't know it it it, it had to be a kid it for yeah. sure had to be a kid. It like yeah. shows how impressionable they are especially that line i think it's from steven merchant he's like oh i wish all the other kids were as blindly as faithful as you or whatever the, you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah i think it totally had to be a kid i agree with you jay and adrian yeah yeah i the i if you're talking about steven merchant the acting in this fucking movie was really good like oh yeah being able to have yeah. that especially steven merchant's character the gestapo scene is so fucking good it's crazy <laughs> And being able to act the way that he is in that moment, I'm just like, holy shit, this is good. And yeah. Scarlett Johansson as the mom is I so her, fucking dude. good, too. She's amazing. She's I was blown her. away. But even JoJo, I think he got nominated like for some, I don't know if it was Oscars or not, but like he was nominated for a bunch of shit like with all these like big name people. It was just this little kid. Nice. It's so cool. And, but yeah, that was his first yeah. film. I mean, he's so young, but that was, that was his he first film. He did really one. fucking good, yeah. He did yeah. do really well. So did um, Elsa's uh, or Elsa Thomason McKenzie. I don't know if that's how you mm-hmm. pronounce her first name, but um, yeah, she did phenomenal too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to touch back a little bit, I guess about like James kind of mentioned, you know, the the general or Captain Sam Rockwell's character. You kind of sympathize for him in a little slight way because you there was that scene where. Um, it was the Gustavo scene where they they find Elsa and Elsa is pretending to be Jojo's passed away sister, and she gets the birthday wrong, but Rockwell's character is just like, oh okay, like you passed, and you know was that kind of him letting her slide under the radar, like, you know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. that was a that whole scene is is really good, and there was a lot of like, I don't know if. I guess there's tension there, but there's a lot of, like, trying to really piece together, like, okay, you know, he lets them off the hook, but she knows they'll be back. Because then what happens pretty close after is that JoJo's mom is, like, dead, right? In the gallows. Yeah. Yeah. And that, when that scene happened, I was just fucking shook. I was like, holy yeah. shit, yeah, they dude. did this. That's did like, not oh, shit. That's right. That's right. That's They're right. definitely yeah. going there. And so that at that point, I was like, well, did he go and tell somebody? But I don't think that's what they were going for. No, they, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I feel like they had like a friendship or something. She's like, oh, your mom's going to kill yeah. me. Like they, like they know each other. So I don't, exactly, I don't think yeah. he would have done that. I think what happened was that because she was spreading, she was dropping off uh, the free, pamphlets. free Germany propaganda. Yeah, fight or, the like, party. Anti, anti-propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I looked into it just to like, clarified and that's what it was like it, but it's just a thing that really happened which you know Taika Waititi in this movie tried to like the things that we see as ridiculous are like things that are that are real like that came from history like these are things that they tried to do and so that piece was like it was one of these things where if they found that you were you know spreading this like free Germany stuff around 
they would just kill you and like hang you in the in public yeah and that's just yeah. what happened yeah um, i honestly it, never knew that i never knew like that there would be people like publicly hanged in... yeah gotta make everyone's fucking scared yeah. of you bro oh, that's yeah, yeah. 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 Brutal. i think like it's in and in a weird way they 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 joke about it but they also like it, it probably really happened where they talk about i think jojo asks one of the army generals like well what what happens if like you know a jew or something you know like he's kind of asking he's trying to like fish for answers about like how to deal with elsa the jew that's hiding away and um which oh what's her name rebel wilson's character i think says <laughs> or somebody else there's just like they're just like yeah well, well we'll just kill you know we'll kill the family and we'll kill just probably a few other people just for good measure yeah you know? like they're just like, <laughs> just like we're just gonna start killing a bunch of people that are somewhat related in a roundabout way which is probably how the secret police operated right like yeah totally yeah. is there a rhyme or reason to that you know but to stick on the secret police a little bit um stephen merchant he he was saying that he acted he acted as a secret police in a way that he thought that these were the type of people who never had power and who were kind of like never respected and finally they got into this position where they had overwhelming amount of power and they just let it mm -hmm. get to their head and like you totally see Dude, that that's which, perfect what the yeah hell? it was so yeah it was so perfect like they're just nerds who kind of are bullied and then they get in this position that yeah the way they're all casual just he'll hit that <laughs> just like those little Dude, ladies. that was and and that's so funny is like that was such a that was such a tense scene yeah. but also like it was it was cut with with really good humor where mm -hmm. every time a new character walks into the room just <laughs> hit it there, hit it there hit it. Every, and yeah. it's just back and forth like i that was the funniest scene i think in the in the whole film for me I like dying. i think dying. i think generally the the comedy fell flat for me a little bit but but okay. i i do believe that that scene was like uh, it was it was both like like good comedy it went a little okay so i was mad i was like okay i was like they'll say hell hitler but what made it like harrowing was just when she had to say it back to them oh, and that yeah. was the hesitation like, you're like Oof. it was just like yeah. fuck it was like that that's when like it hurts i think my favorite part my the funniest part to me was the very beginning <laughs> when they play the i want to hold your hands in, in German. German, yeah, and and they and they basically con uh, like compare Beatlemania to oh yeah, <laughs> like mm -hmm. Hitler mania. Hitler, like that, yeah. I thought that I thought that was the most funniest part. Like I was <laughs> like, was really I good. was laughing at that. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what a like deep <laughs> yeah. cut, like strange, strange comedy. Gosh. But generally, I don't know. I didn't have I didn't have a ton of laughs. I, laugh out I, loud moments yeah like the, the oh, yeah. scene the hell hitler scene i think was the funniest for me but i i kind of agree with you james where i again i think maybe i just had the wrong expectation going into this because i was like this is a comedy with like a lot of slapstick and just a lot of ridiculousness it's just yeah. gonna be funny and then it turned into being like really serious like the the last third almost kind of the last half of the movie is more serious i would say than it is funny yeah um you know they they will use humor to kind of cool things off a bit or taika will but yeah but for the most part but I think that's it's not serious. it's not enough like i, I that's how i feel yeah. like the comedy in the in the first half of the movie was so subpar kind of for me i don't know that mm. when they tried to bring comedy back in the very serious second half, it felt kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like feel. He, I don't know. I feel like he did it like phenomenally. Like that that balance I think was so good, dude. Like you don't see yeah, movies yeah. bounce around like that and like stay within like a the single like vision. You know what I mean? Like a single theme and like movies that are pure comedies or movies that are pure drama or whatever. I don't know, just that mix was... I thought he did really good. Like, I feel like that's one of the things he's really good at. With, like, I yeah, don't know, yeah. like, especially, like, Thor and Where the Wilderbeasts Are and stuff like that, or whatever that movie's called. I think yeah. this is staple Taika Waititi work, and it's... His writing is so fucking good, dude. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. This... I, I I would say that this isn't his best work. I think the other two films that I that I know him really well for... Thor Ragnarok and what we do in the shadows, I think are like just genuinely a lot funnier than this is. 
yeah not that I mean, this movie isn't funny but be, they right? are yeah. and they are and like i just think that you know it just lands so much more and you know granted they're they're a lot looser like you could be a lot looser with a with an action hero movie and with just a straight up mockumentary right. than you can with a movie about hitler and nazis but i don't know this was well done I, maybe it was like maybe it was i think that he's consistently clever yeah and this movie really benefits from the cleverness and it's not yeah, so much sure. like there is humor you know it does taper but i don't know i thought it was really well well done because you are dancing around this which okay this is it gave me a lot of wes anderson vibes in the way of mm -hmm. like <laughs> we're gonna show you this dark subject in this like very horror, colorful horror, way, way. Yeah, jolly kids in uniforms in the forest, kind of. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. Like, it, there was some shots where I was like, "This is literally like some sort of Wes Anderson thing." It's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that but was no. Just to finish that thought, sure. it felt a, there was a lot of Simon Pegg vibes for me, like especially the camera the movements between the kids. Oh, the camera movements, the kids, literally Jojo and his friend. What's his friend's name? Yorkie. Uh, Yorkie, yeah. Yeah, Yorkie. That relationship is literally like the one that Simon Pegg and his friend have in <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. That's true. And they almost look the same. <laughs> so it was just like so intensely. Yeah. That's but it funny. felt good. Yeah, I agree. I, so that, that was like very intentional. Like that was a, well, I mean, obviously the, the costume design and just everything around the set, the whole city was very colorful and vibrant and Taika apparently did some he he did some research on like Nazi Germany at that time and in you know in World War II movies everything is just very bleak and just very gothic and very dark and it's just like it's just this crazy hectic time but apparently like the research that he did that things were colorful and they were like you know the Germans were like experimenting with fashion and like a lot like vibrant colors and things so that was I don't know it was an, it was like very much intentional hmm. but it's interesting because taika like he also said he didn't do almost any fucking research on hitler because he was just like because fuck that guy that was, <laughs> you know and then played him i love that dude That's yeah funny. and then and then plays him i and like he's... go ahead i like that they showed that that side of things because that era of germany does just get buried under being nazis Exactly. But there was like actual things happening and people doing stuff, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Some normal yeah. people there still. It's, it's just so funny that, because Taika's he's he's half Jewish, right? And it's just like who better to play not like what better <laughs> an F you to play Hitler than a, than somebody who's Jewish? Like it's so good. It's just absurd. dude. I love one of the stories I remember hearing is like because he directed it, obviously. It's just him like talking to people and then like trying to direct people in costume, and they're just like oh, God. looking at him, just like and then he's like, "You're right, sorry, this is not. <laughs> this is probably so yeah. weird." That's so weird. God, that's so such a strange. I feel like when you when you're making a move like that, you probably have to be the director and like, you know, nobody else is yeah. gonna play Hitler. So everyone has that trust in the the yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bold, it's bold for sure. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've like from what I've read about Taika Waititi's like directing style is he's pretty. I get, I feel like he leans more like laissez faire, where he's just like, he just trusts the actors to kind of do their thing and to kind of be able to improvise. And a lot of the actors were watching all these like crazy like German films or like things that like to really try to get them into character. And he's like, no, like watch this like funny thing or watch. You know, just kind of like improvise. Like I know you've never done a German Nazi accent, but like just improvise. And and these <laughs> actors are just like, what the fuck? Like what do you like? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll just improvise as a Nazi. But that's just kind of how he is, which is interesting. Yeah. Like, and and I could you could see it. Like when you hear him talk, he just has that very like yeah like just he doesn't <laughs> seem very like yes like we're like we're, we need we need this perfectly you know and. He just seems more like, oh, let's just let's just fucking roll the roll the tape, you know? Yeah, like seeing him on the making of the Mandalorian season one, like he's just like chilling and like it's like a meme that 
every fucking like movie there's like always a picture of him like sleeping somewhere on set and shit like oh he's gosh, just like the yeah. coolest guy dude we love him oh, man, that's so great that's funny that's so good. oh boy so dude we have to talk about the cast we, we've talked a little bit about the cast but I want to go back to Rebel Wilson and just how great she fucking did in this. Like, she's so she has this energy and there's this presence when she's on film or when she's on screen. Like, in all the fucking movies that she's in, you just love, you just love her. Like, I just she's can't funny. help but yeah, she's so fucking hilarious. God, it's, it's I feel so like good. she's always the same kind of person. Yeah, like, in every movie that she's in, but it 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 works for her, you know. It totally works. Yeah. <laughs> What is it? It's like, see that American over there? Go give him a hug. That's so fucked oh, up. Oh, God, dude. it's so fucking <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, so the cast is really good. stacked. Yeah, Sam Rockwell. Hello, yeah. I didn't expect him. Yeah. Yeah. And the dude that's in Game of Thrones who... Oh, I, I forget his name. name. But yeah. Al. Al. Their homoerotic stairs. Not seen... At each change, other, but... Alfie. Oh, yeah. Shit, I almost had it. Alfie Alan? Alan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's cool <clears throat> seeing him in something that's not Game of Thrones. I always love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... um. Go ahead, Jeff. Just his the, their relationship, his and Sam Rockwell's was, I just thought hilarious. Like that. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the clever humor is those things where they just throw in like a dash of like, you know. This shit probably happened too, and you're yeah. gonna see that, yeah. you know. And the, especially the scene where they're like in battle and they have like the capes and shit. <laughs> oh god, it's too fucking it's good. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to touch on the the relationship between Jojo and Elsa. Um, James, I want to take it to you. How did you feel about like the kind of weird romantic kind of relationship they had, but also it was more just brotherly sisterly kind of love thing yeah when i first saw the movie i was like okay like she's definitely too old for him <laughs> and then they yeah. finally like mentioned that but uh it was it was interesting it was interesting to see jojo kind of like unravel his his thoughts as he was just alone with her yeah yeah stuff like that but I think, yeah i think it was it was done like well to kind of show like what better way to show that somebody's human than to have romantic interest in them right and like <laughs> it was just but it was i don't know it was just still so weird i wonder how it would have been maybe it was a good choice that there was that age gap to kind of say like oh like you kind of have a crush on this older girl but it's not anything that you can like legitimately pursue and then it kind of turns more into like a sisterly relationship, you know, like a sibling relationship. Yeah, it's around me like, I don't know, like a kid that's like, thinks their babysitter is like hot or something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I could see. What, yeah. <laughs> like the, the girl's trying to like let him off easy is like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> Can't do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Dude, what a, my, the most clever uh, writing was when um, Jojo asks Elsa, he says like, show me where draw where where jews live like draw where they live and she draws a picture of his head like of his face yeah and then he's like i told uh, yeah. you to draw and she's like that's where we live we live in nazis heads and it's just like rent free, like, like, Holy shit. <laughs> rent free yeah. living in nazis heads that was good but yes just really interesting that she she like very much leans into the the propaganda of like how terrible Jews are right she's like oh yeah we hang upside down and like our hair covers our horns and we like what did she say that happens at 21 like some crazy fucking the horns grow that's what, that's what it happening. is oh that's what it is yeah mm -hmm. that's just yeah i mean that. it was it was interesting because like i felt like it, you know she was mainly like the one that you sort of felt didn't really care about anybody else we're like was trying to you know be free and like was kind of in i mean she's in like a weird reality so i don't blame her but then she does get hit with like something that makes her feel right like he says something to her at some point that she like kind of takes her 
like the more Nathan constant stuff, comedy. Right? No. Maybe it was the Nathan stuff. I don't know. Hmm. Something that he says to her makes her like take a step back and be like, "Fuck that one hurt," you know. And so you you get that both sides of it, which I think is cool, and it definitely builds up and it's supposed to be there, but it's not really a side that's told a lot, or you know, rarely. The Nathan stuff was interesting because she seemed so devastated when Jojo wrote that first note that it was just like, "Oh, like I'm breaking up with you. I'm leaving. I found some <laughs> other girl." and and then, like, Jojo sees how heartbroken she is. So then he rewrites a letter, or, like, you know, rewrites a letter <laughs> yeah. that says, I'm actually still in love with you. We could still get married. But flash forward to towards the end of the film, she's just like, Nathan died of tuberculosis a year ago. You know, so what was it? What was it that really hurt her? Was it, like, Jojo just trying to hurt her? Or, I don't know, it was it was weird. But, there, there like, like Jay was saying, that there was definitely a shift that she she just like really hits the soft spot. Maybe it was just like the realization that he's gone and that she's not free and that she's just living in this kind of mm -hmm. hellhole. It's a shit place, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which I thought the timing of like the events that it's based around was also interesting because it's towards the end of the war and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, here's a situation which would be insane, but also like she makes it out. You know, yeah, okay. weird seeing it from that perspective. Yeah, it really was weird. Um, so let's jump in more into like Scarlett Johansson's character and just like the motherly kind of relationship. I, I, I think at first I didn't really get that. I thought she was just like, oh, yeah, she's just like a Nazi mom. I don't know how Nazi moms <laughs> are, but... She's like, jolly fucking... But she... friendly neighborhood Nazi mom. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, the first scene that we see that really peeks at her being part of the resistance, you know, is just, or the, you know, is where there's all of those um, bodies hanging in the middle of the, you know, the middle of the city, and she forces Jojo to look at them and like, he's, he's just like, what did they do? And she's like, their best. And I was just like, oh, yeah. interesting take. Yeah. No, oh, I loved that. That whole development was awesome. And I think that she like, to me that her character embodies this, like, here's what really we should all probably be striving for where you've got, you know, you've got your pulse on, things in this like political world but your main focus in life is just like living and doing these things and at yeah. the same time you've you're fighting for what you really know is good but you're not necessarily going and like advertising that to the world so much as actually doing things to to get there you know right and in the end she pays a fucking price dude, dude. which is like depressing yeah. so watching it this this is my second time watching it just every time they show her shoes, like at his head level, oh, like before God. that, I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like, it's like oh, so yeah, obvious. She's... It's like, fuck, it just hits so hard when it actually happens, you know? That scene fucking broke me, dude. And when, because when you see or realize that she's dead, you still only see the shoes, you know, hanging. Yeah. And I read that Taika really wanted that to be like, that's a moment that the audience does not get to see. You don't get to see her face. You don't get to see the body because that's for Jojo and his mother. Like mm -hmm. that's a space for them to have that nobody else gets to, mm -hmm. which is like really intense. Like it makes yeah. it that much more like, holy shit, you know? And that's almost like from uh, Saving Private Ryan where Tom Hanks's character, he's, he's describing his wife to, um, I think to Private Ryan, like where he's just saying like, oh yeah, like, you know, there's this, it's like a story about like his wife picking rose bushes, bushes or something. He's like, oh, tell me about that. He's like, no, he's like, that one's just for me. And it's just like, that was kind of the thing with, with Jojo and his mom. Or it, was, Damn. it was just for Jojo. That Heavy. Was, and I didn't expect that. So I just made it like that much crazier. Dude, I didn't expect to almost fucking cry watching this. I literally <laughs> thought I was going to be just laughing the whole time. And that's why... I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't know if that's gonna affect my score, where just like my expectations going into it. Just knowing who Taika Waititi is as a, you know, as a filmmaker, in a sense, I haven't seen much, but having that to compare it to, I was like, whoa, this is not. It's that, but it's more than just that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So was not was not prepared. That's yeah. so interesting. That you, that you guys don't like the shift. Like it's not not even really like a hard shift either. It's not that I, yeah. It's not that I don't like it. It's just I, I like was not expecting to was expecting it at all. You know. Yeah, I guess that's what I, that's what's yeah. so good about it to me is. I love the shift. Yeah. 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 But yeah, we got that. Oh man. Yeah. <clears throat> What else happened? Well, I wrote like a list of what I thought were the clever jokes that were just like throwaways. Uh, yeah. so the first one, when he's planning like a defense, Sam Rockwell's planning a defense around all the invading armies. He has each one like a different like nut or like beans or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Jojo walks over and he's like, who are the walnuts? And he's like, the walnuts are just walnuts. <laughs> and like, those were just, those were good. Um, the whole penises thing. Oh my when god! Talking about what Jews do, and he's like, "Well, I know you cut off the tips of penises." And she's like, "No," and he's like, "Well, the penises are real, or whatever." The it's like, what is it? They use them as earplugs. I was like, "Oh, yeah. oh god, I know." <laughs> um, when I think, I think it's Elsa tells Jojo that he's not a real Nazi or something. And he's like, well, I'm massively into swastikas, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is that are just like, they ring a different way in 2021, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. And then the random one where Sam Rockwell's coming in after the Gestapo, and he's carrying his bike, and he's just like, my bike got a flat, so I carried it. Like, <laughs> it's like yes. No, it doesn't really matter at all, but it's just thrown in there. Oh, God. I love those. Mm-hmm. yeah the, the comedy was really good like i mean i i think i think maybe what just what it was is like i was expecting it to be more non-stop because like again i hate to just go back to you know the ragnarok and what we do in the shadows those are like the those are like so fucking funny like they're like they like i think thor ragnarok has no right being that funny like yeah. to be a superhero yeah. movie i like, agree it's it's insane yeah so. and like what we do in the shadows is like god tier comedy movie like yeah that movie's incredible <laughs> yeah if you guys have not seen either of those dude that oh man what we do in the shadows may be on a, maybe a real contender for like a movie if i ever win a fucking movie pick then <laughs> what we do in the shadows is up there but it feels kind of more like getting into the mood for halloween but yeah you know, yeah still. i'd love to watch that again it's been a long time. Yeah, oh, yeah, it has been. Dude, there's a there's a they made a show that's on it's on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu. Yeah, it's like um, or whatever. On Hulu. Yeah, but it's it's called it's called What We Do in the Shadows, and it's it's pretty good. Like it's I, I'm a fan. I am a fan. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, it's like different yeah. dudes, but it's like pretty similar. It's pretty funny. Yeah, they they have like the original cast has some guest appearances. Oh uh, shit. I keep watching oh, huh? maybe some spoilers in there but i don't <laughs> get too far in, into it but yeah there's they show up they show up for sure oh man but yeah the, so you know to just to get into like the the really feelsy aspects of this you know i think like i said i was not expecting to get close to crying in this i didn't actually cry all right this isn't um <laughs> oh god what was that movie that like cried on twice why can't i think of it um florida project florida project thank you james oh wow, um <laughs> dude fuck ah oh, that's so good anyway listen to our episode on florida, Pro- florida project i cried twice not in the episode but out during the movie anyway um <laughs> i <laughs> uh, yeah so the, uh jojo's mom dying was just like holy shit and then um elsa like realizing that the the allies won you know because jojo tells elsa like she hears all of the commotion she hears the bombs going off she hears everything happening and she's just like what happened like and jojo tells her we won and which was interesting he he actually just says we won right yeah because he's that's... still trying to put that like front up like but but like it, it's but it's an interesting choice of words to say that we won because who is the we right like where is jojo's character at that point 
yeah. is he is he has he shifted towards being on the side of the allies and like maybe that wasn't a lie maybe he's like we won but the allies won you're free you're my hmm. sister so like I, I i want this for you so much that i'm gonna consider myself this you know i don't know maybe that's looking too far into it but um when she says like the first thing that she's gonna do when she's free is to dance and then the very last scene which was like probably my favorite scene of the of the movie is where she walks outside and she sees that you know she sees the american flag going by and like she realizes that the allies won and then she just starts dancing and jojo starts dancing with her and it's the music rolls in and then the credits roll and you have this beautiful quote by uh, rilke let everything happen to you beauty and terror just keep going no feeling is final mm -hmm. like holy shit that yeah. I was just like, I didn't come here for this. I came here to fucking laugh. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. him him like lying to her because he's so scared of her like leaving her him behind. It was just like, fuck, man. I feel so bad. He's yeah. so young, dude. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that what one. Jacqueline said. Like, she was like, when <laughs> when she gets tired of JoJo, he's literally just gonna be alone. <laughs> yeah, just kind of fucked up, right? So yeah. what what exactly happens with Jojo's father? Like, is he actually just off fighting the war somewhere? Is he like KIA, MIA? Like, what does it? He's does probably something dead. Or? Just probably dead. Like, in I feel like he's done. Okay. I feel like the which adds to you know Scarlett Johansson's character more. Um, but I feel like the the ending it, it hit me like a ton of bricks because it's it's a Bowie song in German they're dancing they say you know i don't know just the way it ended and with the quote too like i was already like feeling it when they were dancing and then the quote hit and i was like yeah. me, dude like yeah. i for some reason it's kind of super emotional <laughs> like, it's because of everything that's fucking happened this week like it's crazy it's crazy in america yeah. right now. it's yeah, crazy it's just, world right now the saturday after that terrorist attack on the fucking capital by america itself <laughs> yeah yeah january recording january 9th 2021 so that yeah that was thinking about that a lot i was just like them brainwashing these like kids and like these like older kids and stuff it's just like fuck man like just the way people are raised and like they just it's fucked up that i don't know that that can happen i guess yeah i don't no, know it was it hit differently because we have impeccable timing as always yeah what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> gosh so weird yeah what oh man not to i mean it, it's impossible to to talk about this film and really get into it without going into political things you know it just really is what was that senator who literally quoted hitler oh my god in dude. her uh, it was a freshman yeah, congresswoman there's a newly elect yeah newly elected in person yeah First thing yeah. they did was go into a rally and say that Hitler was right. Hitler was yeah, right on it, one it, thing. It's like Hitler was right about one like, thing. You don't <laughs> say that. Which is just like, it, you know, and it's so crazy because you, if you look at this movie, though, like that—that's the thing. Is like maybe that quote isn't wrong. Like maybe she's not. Maybe maybe she's not wrong in that. But it's just like you just don't quote Hitler. Yeah. Like, I feel like you just don't have to, it's just be something that you just don't say, but it was like, you know, and then you go to this movie and I think the quote had something to do like those who control the children, control the future or whatever, whatever it was. But, yeah. you know, this kind of movie shows the the children kind of growing up in, in that environment and in that mindset. And it's, yeah, yeah, it's extreme. And, but they also right. didn't win, which gives you a little bit of hope, I guess. It yeah. just, it's just dangerous, I think. Yeah, I mean, neither did, like, the Confederacy and all that shit. It's like... Right, yeah. It doesn't really matter, which is sad. Yeah. No, it's crazy to see. It's definitely crazy. And this, the Gestapo scene, again, is just... It hit differently because there were, there was, like, literally a Gestapo, you know, scene in Florida. Yeah. Or, like, or Portland, not, too, right? Like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, too. Level the the florida one was literally like it was um rebecca jones she was a, a scientist researcher working on COVID stuff and she was publishing like real florida numbers and the governor or whoever rick scott that motherfucker was like 
sent police to her house to raid it and like pointed guns in her kids' faces and her husband's face, took all her equipment, her computers, and left. Like that happened in, you know, not even a month ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's in scary. like 70 years after this movie takes place or whatever the fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. And that, that's really the, that's just really the whole Eight. point of, that's really the whole point of like Taika Waititi like writing and, and making this movie was he literally said that he's like this is something that we need to remember and like people yeah. are forgetting you know people are forgetting what what happened what this kind of led to yeah what they were actually and, fucking like and shit so and it's crazy that he started writing this movie after boy which was his first movie oh, but really? he made so many movies in between Oh, really? it's barely, it just didn't. He was just too busy. It didn't get produced until when it did, and yeah, I mean, good thing. Great, yeah, great timing. I mean, oh boy, oh boy. So yeah, what uh, what else you got? What else you guys got? Any? I don't know. James um, is on fucking Facebook over here, bro. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Nothing, man. Nothing about. <laughs> Some <laughs> online shopping. <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Wrapping it up. Are you guys still got more? Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's just it. It's such a you know. It's just such a weird topic to talk around. You know, I can't even imagine writing a film about it. But <laughs> you know, even yeah. making a podcast on something like this, it just it's like ugh. It, 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 I don't know. There's like some, there's definitely some vibe, right? That that I think we all have about talking about Nazis and talking, you know, especially in the time that we're in right now. And it's just like, it's almost, yeah. it's almost too relevant, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you feel pressure to take a stance and and to yeah. say something about it, even if you don't necessarily want to put that out there, you know? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. What I said about, you know, what makes Scarlett Johansson's character so interesting is that she does these things and she believes these things and she <laughs> wants these things, even if she doesn't outright display them, you know, like actions speak louder than words, right? And I think that that's another big thing that we've seen in these past couple of years is like, who who truly cares and who's just putting it out there, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that this, I mean, it's just relevant. There's different forms of what you know what we've seen in the past like social media plays a big part in like what people see and believe and but also how you like how you feel about another person like well what are they saying about this just expecting people to like you know wear that on their sleeve and stuff it's just really wear that on their sleeve right (laughs) yeah so to speak um all right yeah so i think um I think we're about ready to hop into reviews. Does anyone want to be a brave soul and go first? Man, I'd... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm ready. I mean, Taryn? Can I, I call on you? go first, bro, but I'm ready. You always go first? <laughs> yeah. Do it again. You're used to it, then. <laughs> it's just easier because nothing's been said yet. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. I don't know. I think this movie is very fucking clever. Like, Taika Waititi is... Like, I'll watch anything. I don't even want to read what it's about. Like, he's his name is on it. I'm just going to watch it. Like, that's just where I'm at with this guy. Yeah. Like, everything I've seen from him is just, him is just fucking phenomenal. And this movie is no different. Like, just to take that subject matter and make fun of it in that way, while also just being Hitler yourself, like, it's amazing, dude. It's so fucking cool. Like, all the performances are amazing. Like, I don't know, man. I love, like, clever shit like this. Like, every little tiny joke that they throw out, like, it doesn't get a lot of screen time, but, like, if you catch it, it's fucking funny, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I Thinking about it, like, now, 2021, it's, like, that relevancy kind of makes it a little funnier in parts when they when they do make fun of Nazis and stuff. I feel like that, I don't know, that relevancy is uh, interesting, you know? Mm. Hmm. 
I don't know, I'll probably two minutes after I finish, I'll be like, oh, yeah, those are all the things I was going to say, you know, usual. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll just read it. <clears throat> I love this fucking movie. Like, watching it again, like, I was glued to my screen. Like, this is a 9 out of 10. Solid. Wow. Yeah. Like, wow. It's amazing. Nine. All right, a 9 out of 10 coming out of Terran. Who wants to take it over next? James? Jay? Self? I, man, I don't know if I'm ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, whoever wants to go. James, go. take it away. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this is the second time that I've seen this movie, watched this movie. Uh, no, I guess last year sometime. And I don't know. I didn't really care for it the first time I watched it. But watching it the second time, I think I liked it a little bit more. Um, I didn't really find it funny. I, I, I think some of, some of the comedy sometimes can be kind of cringy a little bit in it. Mm. But other times, uh, there's like those little random things that are clever, just kind of building the world around it, building the characters that are like clever, which I enjoy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really feel super sad or anything. I don't know, watching it generally mm. like that, which is, I don't know, maybe I'm just psychopath. Maybe you're a heartless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James is just a hollow shell. Don't listen to him. Something like that. <laughs> and, uh, just lack empathy. But, but yeah, I don't know. Um, besides all that and my hollow shell, uh, I thought it was pretty good. I liked. I really liked uh, Scarlett Johansson. I think she was uh, a lot better in this movie than she was in another movie that she was in. That same year, which is Marriage Story, I which is End Game, dude. She's in a lot. Which of is movies, hot actually. take, garbage. <laughs> Ooh, um, damn. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll talk about. Anyways, that. Anyways, we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> next time somebody <laughs> picks that movie. No, but uh, yeah, I thought she did well. I thought that when, uh, just like how, how clever and how much she loved JoJo and how much she was like trying to shield him from everything and. It was uh, probably the best character when she did the little ashes out of the fireplace. Was yeah, really funny. I wish I could have an ounce of charisma like her character <laughs> I did. Know. But She's so um, great, yeah. she was always just like on her toes, and uh, maybe oh, not my... not always. <laughs> not, not always. Not always. Damn, <laughs> Uh, didn't mean that uh, didn't mean that uh, with that the score is hanging around a oh, 8.3 you're a piece of me. shit for that one man. first a marriage God story take it. and then this <laughs> <laughs> somebody stop this man. When, I, when I first watched it I don't know I was I don't know you know what that, I'm gonna be place, honest with that's, that's higher than I was expecting me too out of yeah, me too. That's good. yeah. You know, that's, that's eight point three. I don't know. I yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. I, I think I could take it over. I'll, I'll do mine next. So, uh, I I really just want to applaud Taika Waititi for making a movie about this subject and like navigating it so well. I think that <laughs> everything that happened, like, it was just it was just put together so perfectly. Like, I feel like it, it had to be a 10 year old boy who was struggling with his developing mind, looking for a father figure, finding that in Hitler and like leaning into the Nazi, you know, to the Nazi party. And then finding a character who is kind of like in this weird way, maybe like Terrence said, like a hot babysitter, right? Finding this character that's the complete opposite of his entire worldview and seeing the humanity in her and like in some ways, like falling in love with her, right? In 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 a sense, as a sister, as a brother, as they say. Um, but it was just it was navigated perfectly. It was done very very well. I think I do kind of lean towards James, where 
I don't know, maybe it wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. You know, there was definitely funny parts. Like there were there were definitely funny parts that I that I laughed out loud, but not as many as in other films that I've seen him make. And maybe that's a side effect of this being a movie about fucking Nazis, right? Um, you know, I think something that we didn't touch on too, too much, we talked a little bit about how it had like the Wes Anderson kind of vibes. Like cinematically, like the cinematography w- was was really good. Like the, it was just like a really nice movie to look at. Like the shots were done really well. I think it was just pleasing to watch in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so like big kudos there. And it was it was an interesting, you know, the the final scene where the Germans are like on their last limbs and they're kind of getting their shit pushed in in their own city was an interesting take on you know, wartime action. You know, most of the time we see war movies where it's just like these crazy loud explosions which happened and like all of these like really dark and gruesome things. But this movie had that, but it it added this weird twist into it where there was still slapstick comedy, right? Like they dropped the bazooka, the, the <laughs> what is the freaking bazooka that destroys tanks? It's like the Pueller, what the fuck is it called? Ponzer shriek or whatever where like it just launches into a building and explodes it and it's just like these little 10 year old boys who oh it's a really bad time to be a nazi i guess like it's just <laughs> it's it's funny when it when it needs to be i think um but yeah i don't know it, it it's an enjoyable movie i i really loved it and you know just the the, the fucking quote at the end by rilke i think really just wrapped everything up together for me um it was good it was a good movie is a is it fumbler hall of fame i i don't think so i you know it's not quite there but it's pretty close it is an 8.7 that's pretty close no it's pretty Pretty close close. pretty close it's good so yeah that's where i'm at jay take it away yeah i'm i'm struggling with this one because it's it just hit a lot of different ways for me um I love the parallels that we've drawn to Wes Anderson, to, you know, these other people that even in some of the comedy, it, it's got this very, like, almost the era of, like, uh, Leslie Nielsen again, coming back into play mm-hmm. with things like the bike and shit like that. Yeah. Um, he's blending all of these clever things and, like, random things into the Stark subject, and it's really cool. It's really hard to do. Uh, you know, taking up the role of Hitler has got to be a whole thing in itself. Like, it's all around, uh, it's a bold, uh, a bold quest, I guess I would call it. And I think that he does it really well. And I think that it's, it's timely, uh, right now. It's, it's a lot of things. You see a lot of angles of things. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot to unpack. Like, Mm -hmm. Scarlett Johansson's character, I think I'll agree with James, is probably the best character in this movie. And you're seeing from her, like, a person who was a a mother, is a mother, but lost her child and is now harboring another one and, like, has this relationship with her and has this relationship with her own son where she knows that the things that he's into are, like, not good, but at the same time she knows that that's maybe the safest place for him to be in germany right at the time and so she doesn't necessarily try to like outright i guess you could call it radicalize him but still cares about him and there she just has a lot of facets to her character that are like really cool um and when she was gone like that really hit me it was Mm -hmm. it was a big hit um the rest of the cast is great sam rockwell is always good um rebel wilson you know it it was just good it was clever and i liked it a lot i liked it more than i thought i would i laughed more than i thought i would which i think is different Hmm. from what you guys were expecting yeah um but i i don't know i don't know if it's hall of fame it's very fucking close though (laughs) so i think i have to give it like an 8.9 right on the cusp so close 8.9 8.9 out of J, which brings us to a collective 8.725. 
So pretty pretty close to the Hall of Fame. Um, That's not bad. But you know, three out of four of us, we're, we're not we're not there. We were on that edge. Even Taryn, I mean, you know, nine point is is not Sweet well guy. into the not well into the Hall of Fame, <laughs> but we can buy. Yeah, so we rated this movie an 8.7 out of 10. We would love to know what you guys think. Leave us a message on any of our socials. You can find all of those at filmfumblers.com. Um, you can even email us at filmfumblers at gmail.com. Next week, that is going to be January 16th. We will be reviewing Children of Men, a movie released in 2006. Um, the best place to follow us for those updates is probably going to be Instagram. Again, just search Film Fumblers there. But yeah, am I missing anything, guys? Filmfumblers.com. That's. Oh, uh, did you no. did you say uh, Filmfumblers.com? What was it? Uh, filmfumblers.com. <laughs> filmfumblers.com. That's what. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, find all of those there. And yeah, if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash filmfumblers.com, <laughs> or no, <laughs> slash twitch.tv slash filmfumblers. <laughs> <laughs> no, not hit that follow button dick stick around for the after show um yeah we'll be we'll be chatting with chatting with chat and seeing, seeing what's up there so thanks so much for tuning in tonight guys have a great rest of your day cheers 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 cheers, cheers.